the ultimate Fiora guide in only 10 minutes if you're new to Fiora and you don't really know how to play her, if you don't know where her damage comes from. When I first started playing Fiora, I didn't really know about her combos, I didn't really know how to proc her R correctly. And today I will break it down, everything in just 10 minutes, so take those 10 minutes and you will learn everything you need to know and if you want to spend some more time if you want a more in-depth guide i've already made a guide this season i will link it on the top of the screen right now for you so you can check this one out as well but today i will tell you everything you need in just 10 minutes so let's not waste any time and start What is up? My name is Mario and here you can see a little bit of my OPGG and you see that I was struggling a long long time on playing League of Legends since Season 1 and I made it out of Bronze and out of Silver first time in Season 2020, so in Season 10 and this was where I started one-tricking Fiora so I made it all the way from Silver to Platinum with only playing Fiora then in uh, season 20, 21, season 11, I did it again to Platinum. Right now I'm struggling a little bit in Gold 3, but my win rate is alright. I just need to play more games, but um, just to see. Uh, of course I'm not a challenger guy, I'm not a challenger player, but I have now 3 years experience on Fiora. I have one million, uh, over 1 million mastery points on her, so... If you are, uh, let's say, Platinum or below and are new to Fiora, I definitely can help you. So, let's go with the abilities. Fiora's Q is a short dash which deals on hit damage and you can use it to jump over terrain. You also can use it to dodge skill shots. But what you really want to be doing with your Q in the most cases is to proc your vitals your passive vitals so always in lane in the laning phase when there is a vital uh, facing towards you you always want to proc it using your Q so you always want to dash and proc the vital and then the next vital will spawn on the opposite side so what you can do there is just get out of range so the vital will spawn then again on your side and then you can proc it again this is the main poke damage in lane it also gives you sustain because you will heal back some of the damage or from your passive and this is uh, your main uh, pattern in lane your main poke uh, to always hit your vitals with your Q. Fiora's W is in my opinion one of the most broken abilities in League of Legends um, it is a attack speed slow and a movement speed slow but if you parry CC, if you parry hard CC, you will stun your enemy for two whole seconds and this is just big, so always when you're facing a matchup where your enemies has some type of CC, always try to, to react to it and to parry it to land a stun off on your enemy. And in every case where you land a stand on your enemy, you will definitely win the trade, if not even get a kill, so this is the main mechanic of her W and it's in my opinion, really, really OP. Fiora's E is a auto attack reset, so make sure to always use it immediately after an auto attack. You can practice this in the practice tool a little bit. It will need some practice, but this is your main damage. So you always want to Q auto E. This is uh, your fast combo, your fastest DPS. Also for pushing turrets for taking down turrets. I really like to go for Sheen on Fiora, always by Essence Reaver. Um, this has synergy with your E and if you do your auto attack reset on the turret you will just deal insane damage and this is your E. Also it slows so you can also use it to chase your enemy. It has a little slow on the first hit and then the second hit will 100% uh, critical strike. Fiora's R is your main go-to combo from level 6 on, so always when you have your R ready you want to try, um, you want to look for an engage on your enemy and here practice this in the practice tool a little bit, this can be a little bit tricky. You can also take your flash for some help, you can flash for uh, to proc a vital, also your auto attack reset of your E and your Q 
um, use them to proc your R uh, faster. Also, you can proc the vitals with your W, of course. And what you always want to be doing is you want to proc the vitals, which are the hardest to proc first. So the ones facing away from you, you want to proc them first and then go for the other ones, because otherwise you will end up um, with only proccing two or three vitals. But you always want to try to proc all four for the maximum damage and the maximum heal. For the runes, you have two rune, pa rune pages. You have the Grasp rune page and the Conqueror. The Grasp is into hard melee matchups, for example like Renekton, Akali, Wukong, Trindamir, where you will need the sustain of the Grasp and here try to proc your Grasp um, as much as possible. So really make sure of, uh, make use of the heal, make sure to use it um, to gain sustain in lane against your enemy and yeah, just play around that. And the second rune page is Conqueror, and this is your main rune page. You will use this in the most matchups, and it's just insane synergy with Fiora's kit because it gives you damage, it gives you healing, and you really want to be looking for extended fights because most of the time you will win extended fights due to your vitals because they will give you healing and extra damage every few seconds. So, Conqueror is your main page. If you end up in a range, ranged matchup, you can always go for press the attack or fleet footwork. Um, it's depending on the matchup. You can play around with it a little bit, but I like to really go for press the attack into easy ranged matchups, but into hard ma ranged matchups, I always take fleet for the extra sustain to just survive the laning phase. Your summoner spells will always be TP and Flash or TP and Ignite. It really depends. I really like to, to go TP and Ignite into every healing matchup, so where my enemy has some sort of healing. Um, for example, Trindamir, Aurelia, they have a lot of healing. Aurelia will always buy Vampiric Scepter first item, which gives her lifesteal. And there I really like to go for Ignite just for the anti-heal. And also this allows you to get some more pressure in the early levels, because with Ignite you can really, really easily grab a kill in the first few levels due to the extra damage you get from the Ignite. For the items, my main build is always Stripe Breaker into Essence Reaver into Ravenous Hydra and then following up with Death Stance and Guardian Angel. Uh, also Sterex Gauge is an option, also Spirit Visage is an option into a lot of AP damage. Um, for the Mythic you can always go for a Gore Drinker. I know High Eel of yours will most likely build Gore Drinker into Ravenous Hydra into Sterex, but uh, in my opinion, uh, this build is uh, better uh, for for climbing. It's better for smurfing because you really can chase your, your enemy down, and you have a lot of push potential with the Essence Reaver. It gives you also mana. It gives you a lot of tower damage, and I think uh, it's just the best um, the best build for me. Um, you can always play around with Gold Drinker. You also can play around with Divine Sundara. I like to to build Divine Sundara into hard matchups, the matchups where you will go with the Grasp room page, so like Poppy, uh, Renekton, and those matchups. Uh, Divine Sundara is good because it's a little bit more 1v1 damage. But yeah, make sure to play around with it. This is the build I use the most. And yeah. In the laning phase, you really want to try to trade with your enemy as much as possible. You win the most level 1 fights so you really are trying to get a kill as early as possible and you also always want to try to get a cheater recall and this means um, that you push in the third wave all the way to your enemy's turret so that you can take a free recall without losing a lot of uh, minions and this is what you want to be doing in the first few levels. In the mid game, you really want to go for the turret, you really want to take down the tier 1 turret as fast as possible because you want to set up your late game so you can really split push. You are always on the opposite side of the map of the dragon, so you always can pressure top when the dragon is up. Also with your TPs, you of course you want to look for TPs to, to fight, to team fights and also to dragon fights, but you always want to be putting pressure on a side lane. 
In the late game, it's really depending on your team. Sometimes you want to stick around with your team because sometimes your team will need your help, especially if you are the main carry, if you have the most kills, you, your team will need your damage to win the fights. So make sure always to have an eye on your TP. If you don't have TP, make sure to stick around your team. Don't go too far away because they might uh, mess up and die. So always stick around and if you have TP up, you can look for a split push on the opposite side of the objective or on the opposite side of your of the team fight, and then uh, join your team with the TP and then win the fight. If you learned at least anything from this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up, also comment down below and let me know where you tuned in from because it's really nice to know. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel, also subscribe to my Twitch. My name there is Climb with Mario as well, you can find the link in my YouTube channel. And yeah, I'm posting weekly content, weekly guides on League of Legends, guides on Fiora, matchups on Fiora and also I'm streaming almost every day, every other day, uh, Fiora rank games, so make sure to join me on my climb to challenger and yeah because i also want to help you guys the best i can to make this season your best season in league of legends yet uh yeah but for now i'm tuning out and wish you guys a nice day see you